What is going on? It is Charles Botenston. It is the first podcast. Just wanted to make sure everything is good to go on uh, on those levels of the video, which is also the microphone and everything else. So this is going to be essentially a series for real estate agents that, and the reason I'm actually doing this, first of all, is that there's really no one, and I was discussing this yesterday with someone that I make sales calls with, and there's really no one in New York City that's actually doing a podcast or teaching agents what to do the right way. There's a lot of people that say, make sales calls. It's like, okay, who am I making sales calls to? What, what time do I make those sales calls? How often do I make those sales calls? What do I say? How do I follow up? What time do I do it? Do I need accountability? Where do I get the leads? You know, how do I track it? You know, what CRM do you use? You know, the, the, all these questions, and I never understood it. You know, that, that's essentially where I'm coming at is I never understood why someone would not just share or just be open, this is what I do or this is how I do it. So this is essentially a podcast for real estate agents from a real estate agent. I'm not a coach that comes out there and says, hey, listen, if you do this and you do that, then everything is going to be good to go. It's like, well, dude, do you understand that it's a totally different market than it was two years ago? And in two years, it's going to be totally different. And if you say the exact same thing, here's an example. Right now, we're focusing on buyers because there's not many out there. All of our listings, the only time that we actually get people to our showings is open houses. Okay, that was rarely the case for the last, say, year and a half. Okay, most of the private showings were where we got our our actual showings, not open houses. Now, we don't. It's crazy how many non. It's crazy how many no buyers are out there. Okay, so if you're not actually adjusting to this, if you're not actually in the weeds, which is essentially today's entire thing that I was I was speaking about with. Eric, the guy that I make sales calls with, I don't actually adjust to that. You're out of business. And by the way, there's going to be a lot of agents that go out of business. There will be a ton of agents that go out of business. And the reason being is that we've been riding a wave. Million dollar listing came up and then people are like, oh, I just have to get licensed and then I make a ton of money. It's like, uh, yeah, well, the market's been really good. Okay. So it's really not... it. it it's, it's not really you, it's the market. You put a home up for sale, it's probably gonna sell. And now, all, m me getting a listing, the, this is the funny thing is, when it was really, really good, in other words, the market was really good, say 2012 to 2017, so for five years, it was really easy to sell a home. It was also really easy to get a listing. And now, you ha your skills to get a listing have to be so much better because there's more competition. There, owners are going to scrutinize everything. What company do you work for? What are you going to be doing? Who are you? How'd you get my contact information? <laughs> What's your, you know, how many have you sold? I just, I, you know, that that's the thing is that there's there's a couple of agents in New York City that I continuously lose listings to, and it's not because I'm bad, th those agents j are, have the ability to actually provide the value to owners that they're better in a way that I can't. And are they better? No, they're not. They just know how to provide, they just know how to market and sell their skills better than I can. And that's the thing is, how do you do that? So today we're actually going to be talking about something that is necessary, okay? It's 100% necessary. It's essentially max communication to owners, okay? And I, and I thought of this last week. And at no time I really needed to do this because I was selling 100% of the listings that I got, 100%. There was only one in the last year that I did not sell. That's also, if I want to be honest, I'm not taking 50, 60 to 100 listings, so the percentage is very low because I'm only taking eight to nine listings at a time. That's not a lot. And it's well below my uh, capability, you know, which is unfortunate, you know, not living up to your standard or not living up to how good you, th you should be 
which stinks to really put it no other way, you know? And I feel even if I was the best agent in New York City, which, you know, are you talking about customer service? Are you talking about sales? Are you talking listing to sale ratio? Are you talking about the amount of listings, the dollar amount? There's a lot of things that go into it. Are you talking about profitability? You know, you could be taking, you could be doing 500 million in sales, but your profitability is tiny. Okay. So I've been, I've been listening to a lot of people. I think one in particular has really helped me out. And he says, there's only three things if you're talking about 100% of the compensation. So if you get $100 and you're paying it to an agent, okay? So say you're, you're paying whatever percentage to the agent, 50%, 60%, 70%. He said there needs to be baked in at least a 20 to 25% net profit. And then you give a percentage, whatever that is. Six, here's the best example. 60% to agents, 25% profit, and then 15% is expenses. That's the best way to do it. And I never thought of it that way. I actually never thought about it because I guess I was one of those people that, you know, just thought, you know, profit's going to come, you know, profit, profit will be there. If it's kind of, it's kind of like what, what's that movie, you know, field of field of dreams, field of angels, field of dreams, where if you build it, they will come. It's like, if you make the money, it will be fine. The IRS will get their cut. You get your cut and you'll be profitable. It's like, no. That's not how it works, okay? So today we're going to be talking about max, com max communication. And the best way to actually say it in one sentence is err on the side of max communication. So err on the side of communicating with all of your clients all the time, every single day. You sneeze, you tell your clients. You walk into your office, you tell your clients. So what does that translate to? That translates to, and the reason we need to do this is because there's really not that much good news for owners. So you're essentially, you have to do what's necessary to continuously either get renewals on your listings, or if it comes down off the market because it's in the fall, you know, we're going into Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, and not much trades between Thanksgiving and New Year's. And if you want to take the listing down and then put it back up in January. Are you going to be that person? That's really what it comes down to. And it comes down to communication. Okay. So I sent out an email yesterday and I just said, listen, I haven't seen a market like this since 2009 when I first started, you know, but the difference is that at that time is that a lot of people were, they wanted to buy, there were buyers out there, but the difference was at that time, banks didn't want to lend. That was the difference. Banks did not want to lend. Okay, now banks want to lend and it's crazy interest rates. It's just there's really no buyers out there. And if you really think about it, the only way that you're communicating with clients right now is I just posted an open house. I just hosted the open house. I just had a showing every single time you do something, you have to let the clients know. If it's a vacant home, like we have, what do we have, four list, five listings right now? You know, a couple of them are vacant. You know, I, I literally email them. I say, and one of them is on the West Coast. And I just said, hey, listen, we're having an open house on this day. You know, I have a showing for that today at 1230. After that showing, hey, listen, this is the feedback. If I, two years ago, a client's like, Ah, that's fine. Not a big deal. I know it's going to sell. I know I'm going to be happy with the price. You know, maybe I'll want a little bit more. But right now, there is no reason, unfortunately, for them to be extremely excited. There, there are listings. You know, I just showed a buyer yesterday. I walked in with her and I just said, this thing is in two and a half years, a million dollar property. And it's on the market for eight seventy five dollars for over a year. What? This is literally on Hicks Street in Brooklyn, a block and a half from the 2-3 train in on an incredible block. And by the way, it has its own entrance. It has its own entrance. And I, and I looked at her and I said, 
as we're walking down and she goes, I really like it. I'm like, I know. And she's like, what do you think we can get it for? I said, listen, I could tell you right now, whatever we get this for in two and a half years, this thing is a million dollar property. And at any other time, this thing, it would have been gone. So that's the market in the reality we're living in is that I'm looking at properties. First of all, our focus is buyers right now. Okay. Because if you bring a buyer to a listing, the listing agent loves you because the listing agent's getting no one through their open houses. You know, no one through, unless it's extremely well priced, unless it's below, you know, I, I heard or I saw it on MSNBC 20% of all homes that are sold right now, or 20% of all, yeah, 20% of all homes that are sold right now are selling at a loss. I'm sorry, 20% of all homes sold from 2014 or 2015 is selling at a loss. Okay, that's four years. That's crazy. One out of five homes in the last four to five years are selling at a loss. Seven out of the last eight quarters, the market has gone down. That's two years. That's not a good market, okay? So this is the thing is that there is always a bottom. This is the example I, I give. I had um, a business in college. And essentially, I would go around to my dorm and I would tell everyone, hey, listen, I'm going to sell your video games or your video, video game systems or your computers or, or whatever. And I'm going to sell it on eBay. I get a 20% cut. I think it was like 15%. 15% cut net after shipping and everything. And then you get the rest. And there is tons of people that took me up on that because we're all poor college kids. And they're like, listen, I'm done playing this video game. Instead of it just sitting there, just sell it for $10, $15. And even that 3 or $4 they got, they're like, listen, it's better than nothing. So I'd go around and I would hustle, hustle muscle it. And, you know, they would say, oh, what do you want to sell it for? I'm like, we're going to put it at 99 cents. What are you talking about 99 cents? I said, the market is the market. And there's a reason for that. Because if you put it at 99 cents, and you, as a buyer, look at it and you see six, seven bids on it, and it's eight or nine dollars for that video game. That's better than zero bids at eight or nine dollars starting price. Do you know what I just said there? So if you start at 99 cents and it gets bid up to, say, eight or nine dollars, it looks more desirable to a buyer than it's starting at eight or nine dollars with zero bids. That's a big difference. And they most people didn't get it. And understandably so. Why would you put this up for 99 cents? I don't want this thing to sell for 99 cents. So I would always say, listen, we could put a reserve on it. A reserve is a bottom price. And if it doesn't clear that bottom price, then it doesn't sell. And they would say, okay, you know, we trust you. And then after a while, I just gave in examples and I just said, hey, listen, this is this happened to Billy Joel. Billy Joel. <laughs> I don't know why I just brought up Billy Joel. This happened to, to Billy and he put it at 99 cents. It sold at six, seven dollars. And then they would trust me. And it's the same thing with the home, which is there is a bottom. Okay. So when people say, if I don't want you to put my home up for a million dollars when I want 1.1, it's like, listen, if we put out a million dollars, it's going to sell. And their thinking, understandably so, is if I if you put out a million dollars, people are going to come at nine hundred thousand. So then I, I always retort and I say, if I put out nine hundred thousand, will they come at nine hundred thousand, or do you think they'll come at eight hundred thousand? There's always a bottom. What if we put it at fifty dollars? Ha 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 ha! No no seriously, what if we put it at fifty dollars? Will it actually trade at fifty dollars? Will it trade more? Will it be more expensive? Yeah. A home is worth a certain price regardless of the market it's in, okay? It's a home. And people know that in the future, it's going to be worth more so long as it's not the top. And even if it was the top, people would bid it up. So that's the thing is, if you really want to keep a client right now, you have to err, E-R-R, err on the side of max communication. Every single time you do anything. You have to email, call, or text both clients. If it's a couple, if it's a parent and a daughter, which I'm dealing with, um, I'm dealing with a couple of those where, where one person is taking control, the other one is not, I include them both. 
We're having an open house. I let them both know we're having a showing. Here's the feedback, things like that. And, and for me, I have no other news. That's the thing. I have no other news. I have nothing to say. But the problem is most agents, including myself, would just be a secret agent. <laughs> I got that, I think, from Brian Buffini. I would be a secret agent. And there'd be, there'd be no, they wouldn't hear from me. They would not hear from me. And they'd be like, what are you doing for my home? Are you actually hosting open houses? Did you forget about my home? What, it, what, where is it listed? And that's the problem is even if I do, you know, I, I had someone, uh, one of my clients say, why don't, why are you only doing an hour open house? Even if I did a four hour open house, I'm going to get the same amount of people. In New York City, it's different. On Long Island and the rest of the country, they could do a two or three hour open house because people have to drive, it takes longer. But if someone is looking directly at that home as a as something that's desirable, then they'll they'll pinpoint that and they'll say, okay, this is an option. And I'm going to see this along with the one right next door. And that's it. And if they don't see something, they'll schedule a private showing. So it's not the amount, it's not the duration of the open house, okay? Maybe it's an hour and a half, maybe it's an hour, two hours, whatever. But there's a diminishing return on the, the duration of open houses. So that's pretty much the, the first podcast. It's gonna be essentially short. You know, sometimes I'm gonna go on rants, like how there's gonna be a bloodbath within the, the brokerage industry in the coming year, 100%. If I'm looking at my expenses and I had a great year and I'm and I'm forecasting out how much I can pay, you know, the minimum is six months because you can you can get one or two deals, which then pushes that out. Okay. But if you're sub three months in your overhead, you should really start hitting the phones. Okay. You should really start pinging your clients, hey, listen, who do you know looking to buy? Because it is a buyer's market. And it's really hard for a buyer, understandably so. I went through 09. There is a place at in Brooklyn. It's called the Oral, 306 Gold Street. And it was it was a new construction then. It came online. I think their tax abatement actually just ended, I, crazy enough. Like when you're in 09, you're like, this thing's going to be going on for 10 years. You can't even think of 10 years. And then it, it went by like that. But the biggest thing is I was trying to convince buyers that this is going to be a crazy deal. This is going to be nuts. You are going to make so much money, but nobody could see it because downtown Brooklyn wasn't cool. There was nothing around. It was kind of in the middle of nowhere. It still is sort of in the middle of nowhere. You have Flatbush Avenue right there, which was going through a revitalization, which the new development was actually paying into. And actually anyone that bought into that was actually paying into it as well. And nobody could see it. But the four clients that I convinced to buy, I said, trust me, trust me you're going to make money. And the people that bought in, sure enough, they made money. They made a lot of money. They doubled their money in five years, okay? And the reason being is that it was flat in 09. It was flat or kind of went down in 2010 because that's when it hit New York City. Beginning in 2011, it was a little bit shaky and then it was a hockey stick. And that's when they sold. And they could have sold that more but they said, this is a good time, I need to buy, and then they sold another one for someone else. This is the thing. In a time like this, you have to understand that in a buyer's market that we are in right now, that at one time, the market will just rocket. It will just skyrocket. And I see that as 2021, after the election, spring of 2021, that is gonna be the beginning. That is gonna be a seven year run this next year, it's not going to be good. So as an agent, you if you want listings, you have to get it at the right price. And you have to err on the side of max communication. You sneeze, tell your client. You wake up, I just woke up. How are you doing? <laughs> whatever, whatever it is, you don't have to ask for anything. You don't have to have a question in there. You just email them. Or you just do something. You just err on the side of max communication. Okay? And then if you have buyers... You have to historically, I actually had a, a chart um, that I met with someone on Sunday and I just, I just showed them historically from 2004, which was a skyrocket 
and then it went down and then a skyrocket and then it's been going down and you essentially just pardon off it was two years 2009 2010 and then this 2018 to 2020 that's two years it's going to take off in 2021 it's historical go all the way back to the beginning of the great depression and it's every single 10 years there's going to be a market recorrection and then it's going to take back off and as an agent the number one thing that you have to be thinking about is your expenses okay we're going to have a lot more time on our hands so it's not spending more money it's spending more time doing what you need to be doing you need to be saving money. You need to be pocketing everything you can. You got to make sure that you're still making all of your overhead, which is marketing and social and video and doing that. But that's not the focus. The focus is your time, outbound calls, asking for referrals, asking for reviews, making sure that goes out, marker reports, things that matter to people that you're being in front of them and you're also asking for business. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, obviously, this guy right behind me is a place that um, we can actually go in. It's actually a door that opens up. And then it's a place. It's nice and silent. It's called Room. Uh, obviously, it's not an ad. I have no one that actually listens to this enough that they would pay me to, <laughs> to, to say that. But it's a great space for agents to make calls because that's our focus. Our focus is making calls for FISBOs, expires, clients, follow-up, open house, anyone that came to an open house. It doesn't matter. We're just calling because it is all about not the money we're putting out, but the sweat equity. All right. Have an amazing day. Amazing day. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. And as always, we're going to be coming out every single week. This is tailored to agents, salespeople, whatever you want. If you want any kind of topic covered, then obviously uh, we'll do that because I have a lot that I want to cover, but I also want to make sure that if there is something of interest that that gets covered as well. Have an amazing day.